in those days we auditioned in a trailer and I had totally forgotten about going into that trailer. Uh, but when I can't remember, was it uh, Eric, Eric Becker, maybe Becker. he was speaking. Yeah, but maybe he was speaking about that. I'm not sure one of the actors was. And, and I remembered that and I hadn't thought of that in years and years and years. And uh, it was kind of special going onto the lot there and uh, waiting outside as he described and uh, because the waiting room was, was quite small and uh, it held maybe three or four actors. So uh, waiting in, and you'd get moved to the waiting room and then into the inner sanctum, a bigger room, but uh, there's where you do the audition where I did the audition uh, for um, Colonel Makepeace uh, where I was cast uh, Firstly, in uh, the Broken Divide, and uh, you mentioned that uh, Steve, in terms of that audition process, and one thing that seems to be common. I've done a few of these uh, sci-fi documentaries in terms of uh, Battlestar Galactica and other sorts of sci-fi series like this in terms of Vancouver. And what struck me is some of the, a good lot of the actors have. Uh, uh, tried out for previous roles in the series before they actually got the role they were and uh, in terms of Stargate SG-1 had you tried out for different roles going back through the years in, in terms of uh, other sorts of different characters and had you come close or was it always just the one sort of audition for Colonel Makepeace that you went for? Well that's a good question. <laughs> Do I Can I recall that? Probably not. Um, I might have been in there a couple of times before uh, if, if I recall correctly, but uh, not too often. No, Colonel Makepeace was uh, a fairly uh, uh, a role I got fairly quickly, as I recall. And uh, I uh, didn't know what was going to become of it, but obviously from the Broken Divide, the character was um, recurred and it was developed. And I was very, very, very grateful for, for that. And uh, uh, again, as you mentioned earlier, asked earlier, it was great to work with the cast. They were just fantastic. And uh, uh, from top to bottom, from, from, the, from Richard Dean to Amanda to uh, Michael, um, right down the line, it was just a, a top-notch uh, production and organization. And uh, you really felt that when you went on the set. Yeah, and I suppose uh, you mentioned there about a, a recurring role uh, in terms of Colonel sort of make piece. And uh, when you sort of make your appearance and uh, I was speaking to uh, another uh, actor who played a sort of similar role. He played uh, the Gaul Ball. I'm trying to, uh, Cliff Simon is his name actually the gold uh, ball in Stargate SG-1 and he was a sort of similar sort of a role, a recurring sort of a role. Uh, is that sort of, do you start to get a sense that at the time you're in the episode, do you treat it as one episode uh, and that's it and I'm going to try and nail this out of the park and uh, if there's other episodes, so be it. If there's not, at least I'll have that to go onto my resume. At least I can say I'd be proud of my appearance in that. Or do you almost get a sense when you appear in an episode that there could be something down the line or do you have to sort of hold off in, do you for, sort of forget about it afterwards or do you think to yourself, well, who knows, I might get the call here, I might get the call here. Are you, are you sort of tentative of folks going forward? Uh, I had absolutely no idea that uh, Colonel Makepeace would return. Uh, you just focus on uh, playing your part to, to the best of your ability uh, at the time and uh, there's no there was no mention of me uh, continuing uh, from from anyone, and uh, but when you when I did get the call from my agent about appearing in uh, Tokra Part One, of course I was very very uh, very happy to hear that, and uh, and then Tokra Part Two, and then it started to roll, and I thought, okay, you know, you got very excited, thinking that uh, this could be um, you know something for the long term or longer term. And, uh, but initially, no, I had no idea that it was going to become what it became. And, uh, but, uh, you know, Into the Fire was, of course, probably the, uh, the most epic um, mm -hmm. episode that uh, Colonel Makepeace appeared in. And, uh, no, I had no idea that it would continue. So mm -hmm. I don't think any actor really does know, unless you're, you're cast off the top as a series regular. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Steve, I suppose you appeared in the first season of, uh, you appeared in episode four of the first season of Stargate SG-1. And at the time when you appeared in the episode, did you get a sense that you were on the set of something that was, uh, in terms of sci-fi, that was something that could run for like it did for Stargate for so long? Do you get that sense walking off a period of the episode, 
crikey, I've appeared in something special here now that is going to really take off or something, or do you treat it as just another gig? Do you, or do you get the sense when you come home and you sit on the table after working, after appearing that episode, that, yeah, I might have been in something here that could really, uh, in terms of TV series, that could really go big time? Well, I think, yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, by the sheer magnitude and, and the quality of the, of the sets that they had mm. constructed, constructed at uh, Bridge Studios, you got the sense, I got the sense then that it was uh, something that, uh, you know, a lot of money was being put into and a lot of effort and a lot of talent and a lot of creativity. And um, looking back, I had a chance yesterday to look at the Broken Divide again and uh, I hadn't seen it in years and years and years. And, and, you know, wow, I thought that episode really had a, a strong filmic quality about it. Mm. Uh, I don't uh, remember the Stargate original movie with Kirk Douglas too clearly, but Broken Divide to me, uh, apart from some of the other episodes really had a strong filmic uh, quality as I mentioned. And I thought, uh, yeah, at the time, wow, with these sets and, and, and just the feeling of uh, uh, just sheer professionalism and, and the investment behind it and, and the people behind it. Uh, yeah, you thought, wow, this is impressive. This this is really impressive. And uh, can you tell us what was your sort of first uh, interactions? Uh, I know it's a long time ago, but your sort of first memories of uh, uh, meeting uh, Richard Dean Anderson on terms of said, obviously a big uh, phenomenon in terms of his time and sort of MacGyver and his character Jack O'Neill is in sci-fi folklore, I suppose, in terms of a real a prominent sort of character and what are your memories of your time on set and those initial memories or those initial encounters with Richard Dean Anderson? Well they were short and very polite and very professional. Um, of course he's a busy man. I think he also served as executive producer on the show. Uh, so you know I, I didn't have an opportunity to uh, intermingle too much with Richard. Of course he's in, in every scene practically. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, Colonel Makepeace, uh, for when he was first introduced in The Broken Divide, was, um, you know, he, here and there and appearing here and there and being introduced. So, um, yeah, again, uh, you know, the lead actors are, are quite busy, you know, um, in, in mostly every scene, as I mentioned. And then between scenes, they're off to uh, hair and makeup uh, or, or costume for a change of costume. So you just kind of, you know you know, just find your space and just uh, your opportunities to say hello and, and uh, get to know them, uh, the, the, the lead actors a little better. And uh, yeah, so uh, as, as the series progressed and I appeared in, 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 in more of them, uh, we became more familiar with each other and uh, uh, yeah. Mm. Five, six and 11, bring them home. Good luck, Colonel. Yes, sir. All right, let's go, move on! 